All right, I'm just going to let it uh, stream for a few seconds because I want to make sure that the buffering is not going to crap out on me. All right, so I was going to work on this painting. This is like a, a picture of the Notre Dame burning, but I think I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to do something much more free and I don't feel like thinking too much. I just want to go, I'm going to goof around. I'm going to make a silly abstract because honestly, most abstracts are kind of goofy and silly. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I figure what I'll do is this, I'll show you this part. This is always satisfying. This is what, um, let me just stop the music. Hold on a second. Pause it. This is a watercolor paper. And I'm going to cut it off the block. Get a nice sharp knife and you go along the edges like this. <clears throat> I love this part. It's just fun. And if you're not if you're not careful, you could actually cut the paper. So you make sure your knife is really sharp and come at an angle like that. And go like that and you're done. And then there's your painting. Put it with the other ones and what I like about it is now you got this nice block of um, paper. Okay. So I have, here's my setup. I got a bunch of pencil crayons and stuff. Right here. These are just regular uh, colored pencils. I've got oil pastels and over here I've got a whole bunch of gouache paints I'm gonna use. All right, so I have no rhyme or reason. I just, I just don't want to think about anything right now. So I'm gonna just, just start screwing around. Okay. Um, I don't even know what this means. Don't it like? Who knows what this means? I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna. I might even just close my eyes. Oops, that wasn't even the color I wanted. So I'm gonna go and um. Uh, 97. I, I did this a couple of these real simple abstract balls, <laughs> just balls of color, and I really enjoyed it. And so, not long ago, a couple days, no, last week, here, last week, I went and did a bunch more, and they're really just silly, meaningless little uh, paintings. So, these are the other ones I did. And, uh, yeah, so screw it. That's what I'm going to do. Hey, Medsy. So I'll zoom in. Let me zoom, zoom, zoom. There we go. That looks pretty good. One more? Okay. This time I'll try to keep the paper around the edges um, white. I tend to get kind of messy and smudge it up a bit. I'm not sure if that looks so good. So what is this? So I just why why would you put colors there? And the answer is who the fuck knows? Just just do. It's like these, I'm doing these like contained balls. I don't even know what's the point or why I do it. Now, let's take some gouache. Brush or two. Let me go to my selection of brushes. I don't know. I grabbed this violet. So is, is this thing streaming? Hold on. It's a very intense kind of violet. I like your approach. Thanks. Oh, fuck it, let's just put 
some paint right on here. <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't know what, oh, black? Yeah, no, maybe no, I'm not gonna put black. Let's try, I don't know what white usually works really nice. Holy shit, I just put a lot on there. You don't need much gouache <clears throat> if you're gonna use gouache. Oh shit, get some white fucking shirt. Yeah, I already smudged up the, uh, the edges. Like, what if I just left it like this? Just pew, simple. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just leave it like this. <laughs> fastest, fastest abstract in the West. Okay, maybe I'll just do a bunch more like this. <laughs> and I'll leave the paper showing through. It's kind of nice, actually. Okay, so this is where I have a problem. I'm not. The clean, I'm gonna go wash my hands. One second. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to. The reason why I want to wash my hands is because I don't want to get paint on the on the edges. All right, I'll sell this for a cool million, cool million. And it took me, how many, like what, like a minute? That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's a Porsche right there. <clears throat> I'll get a Porsche Cayenne because they're the most obnoxious cars on the road. Okay, look at that. Okay, next one. What should I do? That, my friend Meekin, is some silly abstract nonsense. And that's, that's what I'm doing right now. A bunch of silly, goofy, doesn't mean anything, and I just feel like Fuck it, I just want to do it. That's that's the mood I'm in. So let's do another one. Oh, if I'm gonna use this one, I gotta sharpen this pencil. Look at these little cute little lines. What are they? I think that's the point. That's the point I'm trying to make is that who's to say? Oh, let's bring back that yellow. Oh, gray. Why not gray? Well, pastels are fun. Try my oh look at this color. What the fuck is this thing? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's all about that PewDiePie fucking guy. Okay. Oh hey hey hey. I'm like pounding this fucking thing. Now, what about, oh, oh, that's a cool looking color. Look at that. Okay, let's now mess it up a bit. With some gouache. <laughs> Thanks. I like doing sound effects. All right. Let's do, I really wish I had more white, because white is just... Oh, that's kind of a nice color. 
White is really good when it comes to doing abstract paintings. Just my opinion about abstract is you can't take it seriously. As soon as you start taking that shit seriously, you've gone off the deep end. You start like mental masturbation. Like people who think Jackson Pollock's and Mark Rothko and all those guys, like as if they're, they're some sort of genius things. It's not genius. It's just fucking around. They were fucking laughing their asses off. <clears throat> and here's something to check out. I did a painting called The Birth of Modern Art, which is meant to be a, a troll of Jackson Pollock's because one of the reasons why his stuff became so famous is because the CIA infiltrated the um, some of the art critics and basically paid them off to make it seem like, to make them... Uh, basically make um, Jackson Pollock and, and, and the modern artists uh, famous because it was a spy op against the Russians and the idea behind it. It's kind of a weird concept. But once you understand how the propaganda thing worked is there we were in the Cold War at the time, or we, the West was in the Cold War, and they wanted to make the Western culture like seem superior to the Russians. And Russian art at, art at the time was very representational, very realistic, very like stoic and like if you look at the art it was it was not very creative let's call it so they went in and they here i'll even show you here let me show, as i'm blabbing I'll, I'll bring up my website and show you what i'm talking about so if i go to the desktop what is this why is it showing that that's not my desktop that's weird i don't know why i was showing that okay so if you go to my website and uh, you can read articles about this. It's not like a conspiracy. It's actually the reality. So, okay. So my website's directman.com because that's my last name. And uh, if you go to, there's a search thing. If you're on the, if you're on a web, on the, on the um, website and you expand enough, there's a search thing. So I'm going to call it, okay, I'm going to type in modern, modern. And I'll just do a quick search. Oh, there's okay, birth of modern. Okay, just gonna open up this picture. All right. So when you look at modern art paintings, you look at abstracts and you go, "I don't get it." My my kid could do it because we were brainwashed to think it's good art. So look, if you look here, it says CIA. And I, there's me, huh? And I'm talking about, you can watch videos of me talking about it. So my idea was I was gonna paint a bunch of bullshitty little squiggles and stuff, Im implement the word CIA, call it the birth of modern art because the reason why that art became popular is literally a propaganda thing. So we were, we were basically, we were basically um, we were basically brainwashed to think that those splashes of paint were somehow, you know, beautiful and, and works of art. It's amazing. I've always like when I would go to art galleries, and I look at a lot of the modern art stuff. I thought, oh my god, what a fucking joke! Like it's just a bunch of pretentious assholes, mostly, and. The big art is just simply about money laundering. That's that's what it's about. The reason why they're so expensive is it's become a, a form of money laundering. So here I am doing a bunch of abstract little paintings with the full knowledge that this is meaningless bunk. And uh, I think this is how this is the proper attitude you'd have for for abstract art is you just do it for fun. Don't take yourself seriously. You weren't you weren't born yet, but I bet if you studied art, you probably grew up. You know, I did formal art training and everything, but I in my gut, I always felt there was something wrong. Like why, like in Canada, we paid millions of dollars for this painting that had three stripes on it. The government did. Why does that have value? That's the question we should be asking. What is so great about it? Now, there is some value. Let's just talk about the value. Like value is totally subjective. It, like, 
something is worth only what something what a person is willing to pay for it. That's the secret about art when it comes to marketplaces or anything. Literally, its value is only determined by whoever's willing to give him money for it. So if you can convince rich people that it has value, you suddenly have created a market where other people might want to buy it. And that's the genius of, of like the the art world. These people have got a fantastic scam going. It's a scam. All right, so look at this squiggly little goofy thing I just did. Now, maybe someone will enjoy it. Maybe they'll walk by and it'll be framed in someone's house or whatever. And they'll walk by and it might just give them a feeling like, oh, that made me feel good for whatever reason. And honestly, that's that's okay with me. No, I just, why don't I just stop there? And I'll do another one. Let me just wash my hands. I'm gonna call these uh, these are abstract balls. <laughs> so I've done one in 1997, and then I did five, but two weeks ago, and this will be six, and this is gonna be number seven. You're gonna witness a legendary moment in the history of art. You were here when the balls were created, the glorious balls. Everybody wants my balls. My balls are in such high demand. People want to get close to them. They want my balls on the wall, on their walls. They want my balls in their living rooms. <clears throat> One day my balls will be auctioned for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right. All right, so those are two balls. <laughs> Let's do another one. This is so... Okay. Okay, let's be serious here. I kind of feel like... What should I do? What's the paper you're using and why do you prefer it? All right, that's a good question. So... I'm using uh, watercolor paper, and um, I would only ever write, if you're going to do gouache or watercolor, you'd only ever want to really work on something like this, and they come in blocks. The actual, here, let me go to Amazon, and I'll show you a brand that I normally get as I talk about it. Okay, so let me go to my desktop and go to... Amazon because I think the name is is different the brand I normally get this was actually on sale because this stuff is can get expensive so it's called water color spelled with American spelling okay the brand ah here it is. yes this is the brand I normally get arches okay so this is what I would normally recommend arches watercolor pads and this is another French brand, but you know, this is just good quality as well. So the main thing is it comes in a block like this and there's a couple benefits. Uh, can you see this? Oh, no, you can't. You're looking at the video screen. Anyway, there's a couple of benefits to this. Here, I'm just going to show you a picture of this up close. So that's the brand Archie's and it's French. And it's hot pressed and 140 pounds. So that just talks about like the, the pressure of it being compressed and and it's sort of relative to, to, to the thickness of the paper. The paper is very thick. Okay, so I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna go back to my here. Okay. And they usually come in, is it 20? Yeah, tw this one has 20 sheets, and they come in different sizes. This one is 16 by 20, I'm pretty sure. And 100 percent cotton. And the the thing, nice dog. The thing about this stuff 
is when it comes in a block, it's nice because you already have like a solid surface to work on. So you could be outside with this thing and you could you could be on the couch drawing too. So it provides a nice surface. Now, the other very important thing is if you, let's see if you can see this up close. If you look close, there we go. Can you see the texture? There are these little bumps. That picks up. And absorbs the paint and it also provides it a texture. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Ah, here we go. So here's this little paint. This is a drawing I was working on yesterday. If you look close here, you could see, like like right here, you could see the bumps showing through. Where's the camera? Ah. You see the bumps? So that's that's the uh, that's why the texture is nice. And what I said is good for painting is that it, it seems to absorb it better. Um, this particular paper, if you were to paint on regular like an eight and a half by eleven printing paper, you'll find it's going to warp, and uh, that's not something that that great. And that, in fact, I can give you an example again on my website of a painting I did, and I just I I either I was you know. Usually I just paint with anything I had, and I did this years ago. Um, and I think this one example will show you the effects of, of painting with watercolor gouache on crappy paper. So this is just regular old paper that you have at home. Here we go. So I'm going to type in, um, actually I'm going to go to gallery, subject, people. Kind of, I know it's, I think it's under this section. People, there it is. Okay. So this was a very, like a very quick little, oops, sorry, a quick little sketch. And wait till it loads. I drew with a pen and then painted it. And see all the folds? The, the the painting the the paper begins to crinkle because the water actually tightens it so this is this you know was on just a very quick little uh, pen sketch and then I splashed some uh, watercolor on it and then shortly after the pages begin to all crinkle inside so that's why you want to get good watercolor paper like the stuff I have all right so let's create another let's create some more magic let's make another fantastic freaking um gorgeous okay let's paint with my i know i'm i'm completely useless with my left hand so let's just i'm not even gonna look i'm, I'm gonna look at the screen as i draw so i'll do this this thing over here this thing over here i'll do this thing <laughs> okay now i really want to do dark blues okay this is an intense blue let's make this one a darker one so let's bring in let's bring in, oh i like this green this is this is one of my favorite colors this is like a blue green fucking awesome okay let's let's go over here and let's get this thing and throw in a little bit of you so a little bit of you i don't know eh. let's just stick it and then oh this violet this violet's pretty intense. Okay. Now, let's get this brush. That color didn't look so good. Let's put some drops of like water. That's what happens when I just drop the water. Okay, so this is going to be a little risky in that I might spill. And my pleasure. My pleasure. Oh, fuck. Just watch water. White is just sometimes really makes things interesting. Like, what even if I took a pencil and took this and started drawing white with 
with it. So I put them on my finger and just smudged it around a bit. Maybe that's all I need to do. Maybe that's it. All right, that's it. <laughs> that is it. We're, we're, we're witnessing art history here, aren't we? Actually, no. Is it, is it finished? <sighs> okay. Yeah, it's finished. Wow. C'est magnifique. <laughs> You're not finished, son of a bitch. Oh, what is that? <clears throat> there, now it's finished. Okay. I actually did a series of paintings, okay? And I called it Paradelia. Paradelia is a, an, a, a, um, a false perception that there is an object, a thing, a person, or whatever that's there when there really isn't. Because the human mind, we've evolved to look for patterns in the environment so that we can you know, be aware of dangers, for example. So we have a tendency sometimes to think there's something there that when there really isn't. A great example is for some time there was this like structure thing that looked like a face on Mars. Okay, It was a rock formation that was taken at a certain angle. The... Um, People thought it looked like a face, paradelia. That's all it was. So what I did is I made a bunch of abstract paintings and with the intention of seeing if I can evoke paradelia. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I go to my website, I go to gallery, collections, Paradelia, there he is, I did it two years ago. Is it coming? Is it yeah, okay. So these are, my paintings, like the, the galleries are all square, but the paintings aren't necessarily square. Actually, all of these paintings are square except for this one here. Now, each of them is intended to sort of give you an effect like you are, like you might see something. Okay, let's, let's go to, I don't know, this one. And I chose this one because I always kind of see, I do see something in there. It's completely random, completely made up, like just shapes and stuff. And here we go. So what I see in this one is I kind of see a woman here wearing a dress. So this is her, here's the dress. These would be her arms, okay? And this is her torso, so her head is probably up here. And I always kind of feel that. And there's definitely a circle, you see the circle? Because I was uh, kind of playing with the idea of remote viewing, which is something that, if it's real, I can do it. I, I think it's just purely psychological. Anyhow, so that's, uh, that's one. And there is one where I kind of did, I don't know why I'm excited about this. <laughs> no one knows about this. This one here, I kind of put a, a face in here. And I'll show you. Give it a second. So fucking slow. Okay, this one, there's one of my favorite artists who does people. This guy, his name is Lucien Freud. He was actually Freud's grandson, like the psychiatrist. Uh, he's an incredible figurative painter of just amazing so i was looking at this and i kind of put the face in here so you can see here's an eye here's an eye here's a nose here's the mouth so i kind of was screwing around a little bit and i've got a time lapse video you can watch if you wanted to oh yeah it's sort of time lapse i started by this is when I just started taking videos of my as I was doing things. I had my camera, my iPhone in one hand, and then my arm is like zipping around in the other. And then here's a time lapse afterwards. Yeah, I'm not gonna bore you. Okay. All right. So let's go back to painting. Close that. Here we go. All right. What should I do? How many was that? That was uh, three. Okay. I think I might actually be spent soon. I think I might stop. 
believe it or not. <laughs> Even though I, I do make fun of this stuff, it does it does kind of it does actually like if I'm being a hundred percent honest, it does kind of take something out of me. It does. It's sort of like because I, I am actually trying to do something interesting. I just really dislike when people take it seriously because it's just like, you know, yeah. So this one, maybe let's just make this grays and blues. Let's just keep it at a, this kind of a color palette. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, that's nice to know. Well, I've been doing this live streaming thing for a couple years now, all on Facebook, and uh, it's it's a little weird to be honest, because like I'm a super private person, and for me to do this is like the last thing I would ever think about, because I I spent about twenty twenty five years painting and not showing anybody, because I just didn't want to, because I'm an introvert, right? Anyhow, so I've gotten kind of comfortable with this, but the thing is, I've I've had like, I don't know if they're kind of like stalkers. I've had people like who are like, literally waiting during the day to like come online, and uh, it's it's a little creepy sometimes. Oh, looks like you're, are you still there? Oh, well, looks like there was a bit of a buffering. I don't know if you heard what I was saying, but I have a couple people who are a bit stalkerish. And they start sending me personal messages, like try, they, you know, track down my personal Facebook page, and they start sending me messages. Like there's one person who was like texting me like three in the morning, and I'm like, "Are you serious? Like it, that's that's some creepy ass shit." I guess that's that's part of the just the way it goes. And uh, yeah, but um, yeah. And also, too, to be honest, like uh, the type of people that are on Facebook tend to be older, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm definitely young at heart. Like I I've been making video games for 25 years, and I also teach video game production. So the people I've worked with and been around for my most of my career have all been like we've all like you know mid 20s, early 30s, and. Uh, I just like a younger attitude. Like, I don't. I don't look my age, and I don't act my age, and and you know. So I think that you know D Live is definitely it has a younger vibe to it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually tired. Like this, this sort of took something out of me. <laughs> I don't know why. Isn't that strange? Hmm. Needs to be needs a bit more. Some sort of variation, just some sort of. I don't know how to use that clip. Uh, what is this? Hmm, it's kind of on the purplish edge. Holy oh, shit! It's not even coming out. Hmm. Yeah, I just kind of needed needed a bit of peppering or something, just to jazz it up a bit. Okay, that's done. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna do another one. Let me just go wash my hands in a sec.
Mm. So I'll just dry a bit. Oh yeah, I thought about giving up many times. I also thought about deleting. I've got like about 200 maybe videos now of me painting on YouTube with a whopping 16 subscribers. Woohoo! And I've got about 50 more I haven't uploaded. And many times I thought about deleting them because I talked about like my, like I'm like the most private person you're going to find. But here's the thing. Here's what I'm doing. And I recommend you might want to consider it too, which is in life, you got to take risks and you can't be comfortable. And I actually think it was David Bowie who was doing an interview and he was like, wow, that's, I totally agree with what you're saying. Something like, whatever you're doing, push yourself to the point where it's not comfortable and then that's where you should be. And like, for example, I don't like the fact I'm online and there's people that could be looking at me, you know, and then I might say stuff that is too personal, but I figure fuck, I could be dead any day. Boom, gone. And I would have not been myself not been true to myself if I didn't do this because this this for me is really hard this makes me super uncomfortable and I, I haven't deleted those hundreds of videos yet <laughs> and I still like I just takes time to upload them but I'm gonna start trying doing multi streaming like on YouTube Facebook and here and see if that works yeah that's what it comes down to you gotta take some. You gotta take some risks and not feel too comfortable. So what I'm doing is I'm just. I want to. I want to dry just a little bit. Like if you look here, I don't know if I get the right angle. You could see it's wet. Oh, see the bit of blob right here. There's actually a blob of water, and my concern is if I move it too much, it's gonna do. Like I like the effect the way it is right now. It's perfect, right? So let's just. Oh, I know. How about the next one? I'm going to do like an intense red. This color. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? It's well, it looks a little pink on this on the screen, but in real life, it's a slightly more uh, it, it, it is pinkish, but it's, it's slightly more red than I think the screen looks. Of course, it could be. Like, OK, so I'm going to take a chance now and cut this out. So here's the thing. Oh, look, I got oh, it's shit balls. Let me just go wash my, my hands. tiny bit of paint I got on the edge of the thing my problem is that I'm a I'm naturally messy I'm not like a perfectionist anal person who's very clean and organized I'm I'm much more like a <clears throat> quiet tornado <laughs> I think it doesn't help that I'm very big I'm, I'm a lot bigger than I appear. I'm about six, six one. I'm like three hundred and something pounds. So my hands are usually about a couple inches bigger than most people. Let's go here. So I'm used to like knocking into things, hitting doorways with my shoulders and shit like that. <laughs> I'm not like a giant sumo wrestler. Oh, I lived in Japan once. And I got invited to a sumo thing because, oh, here's a quick story. I had a friend, this Australian girl, who had a thing for, I think his name was Kobayashi. He was Hawaiian, but he was Japan's, like, number one sumo guy. This is back in 1993. And he was, like, a superstar. He was, like, the most famous person in all Japan. He was this American sumo wrestler from Hawaii, and he's fucking huge. And so... She was in contact with him and she wanted to meet him and, you know, maybe even have sex with the guy. I mean, he was huge. And so 
she she connected with him somehow and we all got got to go and got these amazing seats at this sumo competition anyhow when i went there uh, the sumo guys i was bigger than most of the sumo dudes <laughs> and i was thinking i thought they would they'd be huge but they're all like i was like i went to meet some of them and i was like looking down on them going really what <laughs> but that that guy i think it's kobayashi i think or something like that but anyhow he was he was big he was probably like 600 pounds or something. What was her name? God, she was so crazy. Kirsten? I think her name was Kirsten. Kristen. Kristen, okay. Anyhow, let's go quit babbling and let's lay down. So here's that color I was talking about. It's gorgeous. It, it's got a definitely not just straight red. Let's, let's bring up some reds. That's orange. Don't want orange, I want reds. So this is the red, let's cover up that orange. This is like angry and strong. Kobayashi. Actually, Kobayashi was think the mediator the character's name in the usual suspects which was a really good movie where kobayashi was like is it was it the main bad guy no kaiser soze was the bad guy and kobayashi was the his representative who may have been kaiser soze the whole time kobayashi Okay, this is kind of interesting. Let's do a couple more colors. I don't know. I don't even know if anybody's here listening to my fantastic stories. Oh shit! Ah, you fucking slut. Sorry. God damn it! I swear a lot. Oops! I called. I called my pen broken pencil a slut. <laughs> oh my god! Sometimes. I just laugh at myself. <laughs> I killed my pen a slut. <clears throat> I tell you, swearing is very cathartic, man. But you got to be careful because some people take it the wrong way and they get upset and stuff. So, you know, just if you're on the internet talking to complete strangers, try not to call your, your stuff slut. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? I think what's going to look good is dropping some gua some gouache action right in the middle. Crimson or pure red? Let's do crim no, pure red. This time I'm going to be careful here because if I mix any white with it, it's going to turn pink and I don't want that. So I need a fresh brush. Ah, no. Oh, this brushes. I gotta wash that. Okay. Take some water. like that huh I kind of like that maybe I'm just gonna leave it interesting very interesting Could you tell us more about your work in gaming? Oh, well, yeah, I, sure. I've been. I uh, started programming video games when I was fifteen. And then I uh, when I lived in Japan. After I went to university, I went to art school, and then I went to university. And when I was living in Japan, I started working on a video game. It was 
called Rhythm Jungle for the 3DO, which never launched. And it was basically a, a kid's, um, it was like Guitar Hero, but for Yamaha drum machines and keyboards. And I did the background art and characters and stuff. And then, and then uh, my goal was to run a game studio. So I started with a company making casino games. And I was the fifth employee and we grew to like 60, 70 people or something. And I, I was in charge of all game production. We eventually started making web-based games. This is like the mid nineties, mid late nineties. And we started making like 3D games and shit. And then I, I left to start my own company. I built this thing that was like Steam when Steam came out. I actually met Gabe and we uh, showed each other. I saw Steam before the entire world because I was building it for, it was called Games Mania. It was, I made the world's first games on demand product, um, which was launched just before Steam, but it was only for Canada. It was actually with Bell Canada. So that's why Gabe was cool with me showing, seeing Steam before it was launched because he knew that I was with Bell Canada and our market was Canada only. So we sort of compared products and shit. I launched that and I left the company and they, they closed everything down a while after because they went back to being a phone company. And I started a studio. We made a bunch of Xbox PC games. Then I merged my studio with a larger studio called Digital Streams. And I was executive producer on a lot of projects. I, I did world building, game design. Um, after Digital Streams, I went back to my studio, my own studio, and we did an MMO for Facebook. And um, I mean, I think I've done worked on about six, six or seven published titles. I, I worked on so many prototypes, did a PSP prototype, met the uh, chairman of Koji. We pitched that to him. That was pretty cool. Didn't go anywhere. Um, yeah, no, I've done it all. I've done pretty much everything game development except for hard, like for coding. Um, I did coding up to university, but I said it wasn't for me. So I, my, my background is more art. So for about five or six years, I was a 3D modeler animator. I did a lot of GUI development and I did a lot of the game design. And my favorite thing of all time is world building, level design. So I did that for about six years. Um, I did a bunch of my own games and my studio was small. So when I did my studio, we were only about 10, 15 people. And back then, AAA was 20 people. So what happened was just before, and we had to do, we had to do a bunch of shitty games. So I did a bunch of like crappy value titles and small Xbox games. And this is like way, this is on Xbox One. And uh, just, we were about to go to AAA and then the new console 360 came out and you had to have like a hundred people and your budgets went from like 2 million to like 10, 20 million. And so I couldn't, I couldn't grow my company fast enough. So I merged it with a, with a, a really famous studio. And then uh, I helped their project for a while and then went back to mine. That's like over 25 years. And now I do a lot of consulting to like game studios. I do a lot of work with companies for funding. I, I'm a, like, I'm, I'm like a secret jury member that decides on funding for video games. Like it's, it's all under what's called an NDA, non-disclosure agreement. I can't talk about it, but I do a lot of work where I'll review game projects and help decide whether they should get funding or not. Um, I also teach video game productions. There's a postgraduate course up here in Toronto that I've been teaching part-time for like 10 years. Like I teach a couple hours a week and it's really cool because it's very intense and it's like I train them as if how I would like them to be ready for my studio if I when I was running a studio. I'm not running a studio anymore. And all my best friends run studios. So one of my best one of my best friends just sold his studio to Microsoft. He's got a really cool game called uh we Happy Few, and his company's called Compulsions Games, and he's one of my best friends, and I've got a couple of really good friends, like one of my other best friends, Old Finish Line Games, and uh, they used to own Interactive. Yeah, so anyhow, I've been really, my main things are, are video game development, art, and probably psychology too. There you go. And now, I've been taking a little bit of a break from the industry in that I haven't done hardcore development in about three years. So since I was 25, I've been doing like full-time game development. So so 20, uh, so that was around 95, 2005, 2015. So, my math isn't good to 15. Yeah, almost 25 years. Oh, actually, it would be 25 years because when I was in Japan, that was basically a year, and that was 93. Even though it was only, it was, wasn't was full-time. Like, I would go there, 
I was teaching English. And I was working my ass off teaching English and working in the studio. And I got in because the owner was uh, this German dude. And uh, I knew him through a friend who was, we were doing Aikido together. And uh, he uh, was married to a Japanese woman. And he liked me because I had a ton of animation experience. And also, what he found was with the Japanese guys, they were all very, like, this is his opinion, and I can understand it. He said that, uh, I'm just going to take a break for a minute. He said, his name was uh, uh, Herman Barima. He said that the, the Japanese people, artists, were very technically good. But they weren't very creative, and so what he brought me in, I start, I re, I did the main characters, I did like back then it was all sprite based animation, so it's two D sprite, you know, like a platformer game, like but it wasn't, it was it was a, it was actually a bit, of a, it was a bit of a platformer actually. It's too bad. I spent about nine ten months working on it. The fucker never paid me. I had to go back to J Toronto, Canada, after spending a year in Japan. My brother was getting married, and it was about a year. And he was promised, okay, I'm going to pay you, I'm going to pay you. I get back to Toronto, and of course, emails and, and you know phone calls, and it's like, totally got screwed. So I learned the hard way. <laughs> get paid up front. For your new freelance work, get half up front or something. But I was a young kid. I was 23, and I didn't know anything. And I was just so excited to, to make video games that I didn't even care. And I'm telling you, back then, it was really rare. You know, there weren't, uh, in fact, I was one of the first people to learn uh, 3D modeling. Um, when I came back to Toronto, I went to Ryerson University and they just had this course called 3D Studio Max and it was version one of the software. And I said, I got to do this. And I went there and it was a bunch of people in the basement and they had, the, everyone got a, the book, 3D Studio Max version one. And the teacher says, okay, let's learn 3D modeling. And he opens the page and he starts reading it. And me and this other guy, Dean Davis, we're like looking at each other and going, what? Forget this. So we blew ahead of this guy. He was like 50 or 60. He didn't, and I was way into technology. Like I was like, I was doing, I, I stopped game programming when I had, to, when I, when I ran out of, I was on, I ran out of uh, memory basic and I had to start doing machine language. And I was like, bah. anyhow, so Dean and I just totally went so far ahead of this guy. And we were down, we actually, we didn't have power enough computers at home. They had Pentium 100s. <laughs> I actually later on hired him. After I got hired to start up that studio, he was one of my first hires, actually. He was a cool guy, Dean Davis. I haven't seen him in a long time. I think he's now doing film, film production. Okay, I'm just, what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to decide if I want to do one more. I did four. <sighs> Don't want to do more or not. I think, I think I'm gonna take a break. Yeah, it's been about an hour. That's yeah, probably good. I might go come back later, although I do have a lot of work to do. It's one. 11 on Tuesday, April 16th. I'm actually, tomorrow is my last day of teaching the, of, at the, the college. And I have to prepare because one class is doing these final presentations and I have to prepare some stuff. And I haven't been, I haven't taken my dog out in two days, so she's ready to run. And I got some other stuff to do. Anyway, all right, well, thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting. If you guys like it, I'll, I'll, I'll keep doing more. Um, hey, anyway, that's it. See ya. Oh, thanks for the ice cream. Bye.